morning. Good morning, brothers and sisters. Hope you're doing fine. Hope uh, today is another good day for you also because this is the day that the Lord has made and uh, we're supposed to be glad and rejoice and eat as we study His Word. And uh, in today's Bible study lesson, we're going to be focusing on this uh, uh, question. What does it mean to be a godly father? What does it mean to be a godly father? Hope you've got a pen, a paper, and uh, your Bible. And uh, if you're ready, then let's get started. Fatherhood was one of the first jobs that uh, God gave men. And immediately after creating Adam and Eve, God commanded them to be fruitful and to multiply. Genesis 1.28 The Bible says, And God blessed them, and God said unto them, Be fruitful and multiply, and replenish the earth, and subdue it, and have dominion over the fish of the sea, and over the fall of the air, and over the living thing, every living thing that moves upon the earth. And one of the the primary purposes of marriage was offspring who would fill the earth with God's praise and glory. However, just providing a seed for conception is merely the beginning of God's expectation for fathers. A seed can make a child, but it takes a real man to be a father. Some men who want to be good fathers have little understanding of what godly fatherhood looks like. So this... Uh, Bible study is going to explore some characteristics of a godly father. Okay, number one. A godly father knows God. Because it should go without stating, but many men want their children to have a relationship with God, but they do not have such a relationship with God themselves. They let their wives take the kids to church, trust the preacher to instill godly values and assume they are obeying what they need to be because they provide exposure to godliness. But children model what they see. If a dad does not consider obedience to God being important, then why should the children do? If a father doesn't lead the family spiritually, it must not be a priority. That's what the children will think. So godly fatherhood begins within the heart of a man. He considered his, his, uh, he considers his own relationship with God the most important one in his life and models that godliness for his children. Number two, a godly father loves and honors his wife. It has been said that the best gift that a father can give his children is to love their mother. When children grow up watching healthy, loving interactions between their parents, they naturally seek to imitate that in their own marriages. Sadly, children often do not see their fathers and mothers loving each other. Even if a man is divorced or single, he can still model respectful behavior towards his child's mother. If he's remarried, he can demonstrate a loving relationship with his current wife. The Bible tells us in Ephesians 5.25, Husbands, love your wives even as Christ also loved the church and gave himself for it. And in verse 28 it says, So ought men to love their wives as their own bodies, He that loveth his wife, loveth himself. Number three. A godly father accepts responsibility for his children's spiritual training. Quite often, the children's uh, training is left to the mother while the father considers a paycheck being his contribution to the family. While providing Financially, for families, a very important responsibility for fathers. It's not their, their only responsibility. Yes, we know the Bible says a man has to provide for his family. First Timothy 5 8. 
the Bible says, but if any provide not for his own, and especially for those of his own house, he has denied the faith and is worse than an infidel. But of course, while he may delegate much of the day-to-day teaching to his wife, a godly father still bears responsibility. For example, he should uh, pray with his children and talk with them about what the Bible teaches. He should encourage Christian character in his children by his example as well as his words of instructions and the expectations of behavior he sets forth to his children and enforces with his children. That's something that they should watch out on and try as much as to influence the children. Number four, a godly father is continually aware of his influence. Continually aware of his influence. You know, many fathers, they will tell children, do what I say, but not what I do. Now, this has been the most unfortunate attitude of many fathers. Little eyes observe and learn from watching dad's behavior. And regardless of what he says, he believes. They see that he says one thing, but he does another. And sons in particular need a male role model to show them how to become men. Dads may not realize it, but everything they do is influencing their children. Words alone are not enough. We should consider what a child might learn from these fatherly instructions. Think about this. If you're a father and you always tell your children, church is important, so you guys go, but I'm staying home to watch football. Or maybe you say to them, don't you lie to me, but tell that person on the phone that I'm not here. Or, I just cast our neighbor, but uh, if I hear you guys saying those words, you're going to, you know, face it rough. Or maybe you hear, stay away from drugs and alcohol, but uh, you guys bring me a beer and uh, my cigarettes. What do you think a child is going to react? How do you think that child is going to react? Okay, number five. A godly father models selfless service. Selfless service. Much of Jesus' early life was given to serving others. And as followers of Jesus, we are to imitate that service. The Bible says in Matthew 20 verse 28, Even as the Son of Man came not to be ministered unto, but to minister, and to give his life a ransom for many. Likewise, we understand that uh, godly fathers, they should figure out ways to improve their little ones in that service. Think about you being a father and you, your children hear you saying, let's go over and uh, just mow Mrs. Uh, let's say Mrs. John's yard because her husband had a surgery and uh, she's got a new baby. What do you think the children will do? When the children, they will hear that and they grow watching their father quietly serving the Lord without expectation of reward. They will uh, put it in mind and carry those values. Number six, a godly father is consistent, consistent. Nothing confuses children more than inconsistency. Either in discipline or example, a father who is angry one minute and loving the next minute, he always creates insecurity in his children. And fathers need not need to be very careful that they don't take out their frustrations on their children and later excuse their behavior by saying, you know guys, I was, I was just as upset. Godly fathers channel their anger where it needs to go. They practice forgiveness. 
and they never allow anger to create confusion in their children. If a father says he's going to do something, he'd better do it. Children need to know what to expect from their father. Trustworthy. Number seven. A godly father disciplines his children appropriately. Discipline. Why? Discipline is part of a child rearing and should not be ignored or sober uh, or solely de- delegated to the wife. Discipline should be a part of both parents. The Bible says in Hebrews 12 verse 9 to 10, Furthermore, we have had fathers of our flesh which corrected us, and we gave them reverence. Shall we not much rather be in subjection unto the father of spirits and live? For they verily for a few days chastened us after their own pleasure, but he for our own profit. So God is uh, saying that uh, the earthly fathers should uh, discipline or chastise their children. Okay? So fathers should do that. Wise discipline helps children to learn to control themselves and keeps them out of serious trouble. Think about uh, Proverbs 13 verse 24. It says, He that spares the rod hateth his son, but he that loveth him chasteneth him. Betimes. Look at uh, Proverbs 18 verse 19. A brother offended is harder to be won than a strong city. And their contentions are like the bars, the bars of a castle. So definitely, correct discipline is not abusive, vengeful, or sporadic. A child should know where the boundary lines are, and he should also know with absolute certainty what happens when he crosses those lines. Number eight. A godly father does not allow himself to be controlled by outside influences like addictions such as uh, alcohol, drugs, pornography or dirty stuff and they often create a home environment marked by insecurity, fear and depression when they do such kind of things. And fathers who display addictive behaviors often teach their children to do the same. Godly fathers are controlled only by the Holy Spirit. The Bible says in Ephesians 5.18 And be not drunk with wine wherein in excess but be filled with the Spirit. Children tend to adopt whatever mm, gods their parents consistently worship. Therefore if your god is alcohol or drug abuse or whatever it may be you, you may just uh, be having your God as yourself. You love yourself more than everybody else. Or you love a specific thing more than anything else. That's your God. So children will adopt whatever gods their parents consistently worship from generation to generation. Think about Exodus 20 verse uh, 4 to 5. The Bible tells us Thou shalt not make unto thee any graven image or any likeness of anything that is in heaven above or that is in earth beneath or that is in the water underneath. Thou shalt not bow down thyself to them nor serve them. For I, the Lord thy God, am a jealous God, visiting the iniquity of the fathers upon the children unto the third and fourth generation of them that hate me. you get the point now get the point now children who watch their fathers run to Jesus with their problems can learn to imitate that health behaviors but if you run to alcohol you learn you 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 uh, you run to arguments or you run to something else they're going to imitate exactly that number nine a godly father is a man under authority And due to his sinful nature of man, a man will fight to be his own boss. 
and in many cultures it is considered admirable to answer to no one. However, Jesus demonstrated that he was a man under authority of his heavenly Father. John 5.19 Then answered Jesus and said unto them, Verily, verily, I say unto you, The Son can do nothing of himself, but what the, he sees the Father do. For what things he does, he also does the Son likewise. And also we see John 12.49 says, For I have not spoken my, of myself, but the Father which sent me, he gave me a commandment, what I should speak and say. And what I should speak. You see? So Jesus uh, readily gave credit to God for his successes and submitted himself fully to the will of God. John 8, 29. And he that sent me is with me. The Father has not left me alone, for I do always those things that please him. So having heard that, we understand a godly father will live as a man under God's authority and that and that of God given earthly institutions such as employment, church and government because the Bible says you should respect authority 1 Peter 2.18, Romans 13.1-2 and Hebrews 13.17 Number 10 A godly father will lead The world is in desperate need of men who will lead wisely and leadership is not a domination or control a leader is one who goes first. He sets the pace for the family by practicing what he preaches. He's on the lookout for dangers and takes initiative to protect his family from them. He meets first with God so that when he presents a plan to his family, they have confidence that he's following the direction of the Holy Spirit. He leads them to a healthy Bible teaching church. He leads them in personal devotions. He leads them away from worldliness, he leads his wife as a confidant and champion. He leads his children to come to know Christ. He leads his community through charitable service and wise counsel. He leads a church by serving according to his gifts. And he leads other men to follow his example. He's a man that his children can be proud of. Proverbs 17 verse 6. Children's children are the crown of old men and the glory of children are their fathers. So finally, regardless of a man's uh, past or his own percentage, he has the potential to be a godly father. The qualification for an elder of deacon, they give us a perfect example of a godly father. 1 Timothy 3, 1 to 12 are a good standard for all of us. A father who adheres to those guidelines will do well if he seeks the Lord with all his heart. The Bible tells us in Proverbs 3, 5 to 6. We should strive, strive to keep his priorities right and let's love and have humility defining us as men. Any Christian father can become a man that his children are all honored to call dad. Hope this was a blessing to you. That's the end of our today's Bible study lesson. Hope you have learned something. You can always uh, download this uh, podcast to listen later offline or share to your friends and family. And don't forget to subscribe and favorite our channel to always be notified whenever we post a new podcast. If you'd like to support this ministry, please uh, use the details in the description below. Otherwise, I hope to see you in the next one.